Jens Eisert, Chair of the Dahlem Center for Complex Quantum Systems, Freie Universität Berlin. Yes. The second quantum revolution, from unconditionally secure communication to new modes of computation. Yes, thanks so much indeed. So in 1961, one of the founders of Intel looked at the progress of computing until that time, starting from the famous SUSE Z3 machine, and predicted that the progress in computing power could be so fast so that the number of transistors in integrated circuits could about double every two years. So challenging as this may sound, this turned out to be a remarkably accurate prediction, in fact, over decades. This reflects a smaller and smaller integration in circuits and minimum feature sizes. And pushing this prediction further, one could see that not too long in the future, this would amount to minimum feature sizes at about the size of a single atom. And this would be not so remarkable, was it not, that at that scale, the laws of nature are fundamentally different, namely those of quantum mechanics. Now, quantum mechanics, oh, uh, is the physical theory of nature on that level of atoms, single molecules, um, light quanta, developed in the 1920s by two handful of protagonists. It changed the world in that it provides the understanding of semiconductors, material science and all ramifications, lasers and, and, and all that. It's so ubiquitous in all kinds of industrial high-tech endeavors that this is sometimes referred to as the first quantum uh, revolution. The point now is that quantum mechanics is not just like classical mechanics describing our macroscopic uh, world. It's fundamentally and radically different. Say, if you make a measurement, the outcome will be random, in a way truly, genuinely random. If you perform a, if you make a measurement, this would mean that you necessarily disturb the system in, in one way or the other, or maybe most intriguingly, there's the superposition principle of alternatives, which would mean that an atom would be not here or there, but in a precise way, here and there at the same time. If you think that sounds weird, well, that just means that we don't have good physical receptions for that or not a good language on our macroscopic scale, but this is precisely how nature functions on the fundamental uh, level. So to come back to our computing theme, that means that you cannot think of only bits being in zero or one, as advertised on the beautiful uh, poster outside, but you can think of entire registers being in a coherent superposition at the same time in, in, in a quantum uh, parallelism. And this can be made use of to think of entirely novel modes of information processing using such single quantum uh, systems. For example, making use of this idea of no measurement without disturbance, one can think of, in principle, unconditionally secure transmission of information that nobody, not even secret services for that matter, could intercept or break. It's called bug-proof communication by our friends at the relevant ministry, and there's surely a potential future need of communication for that type of matter. And this is already very close to um, what is achievable uh, with uh, present technology um, today. What is a little bit further off technology-wise, but even possibly more exciting and presumably also soon uh, significantly funded by the European Commission, is the idea of making use of this kind of quantum parallelism to think of quantum simulators that can simulate processes like in quantum chemistry beyond what's capable in quantum supercomputers or even fully-fledged quantum computers that make use of this coherent superposition over um, large scales. These machines these computation machines using quantum systems, they cannot solve all problems faster, but some problems like factoring, they can solve much faster than any computer, any supercomputer, for that matter, any anticipated classical supercomputer um, can uh, solve um, um, any time. Surely an exciting vision for the future of computing. So how many of those uh, quantum computers we would need in the future? This is hard to predict, but... Uh, uh, Let's keep in mind the words of the former IBM boss, Thomas Watson, who said, well, 
there may be a world market for maybe five computers someday. So thank you very much for your attention.